We're here today with one of our newest, but well-deserving Arizona drag racing legends, uh, Debbie Dole. Debbie's also a member of the Arizona Drag Racing Hall of Fame. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Uh, you've got a great story. Uh, you and your you and your husband have been racing for how many years now? Um, well, we've been together almost 47 years. That's pretty good. So, so you met each other when you were like six years old. <laughs> <laughs> Doing the math. Exactly. <laughs> the, uh, how, did, how did you first, what was your first, how did you first get in? Well, first of all, let me ask you, are you originally from Arizona or where, or where are you from? I was born in Idaho. Okay. I'm an Air Force brat. Okay. We traveled so mountain home? a lot. Mountain home. Oh, there you yep. go. Mountain Home, Idaho, and uh, while my dad was overseas quite a few times, we lived most of our life in upstate New York with my grandparents, and um, then we went to California. My grandparents moved to Arizona, and so we moved to Arizona. There you there you go. And here we are. And you became an uh, Arizona zoni. A zoni. There yep. you go. Mm -hmm. When so when you grew you know growing up. When did you, was it the boy that got you in the cars or were you, you kind of in the car, the cars as well? Or did you notice cars first or the boys first? Well, I love cars. Yeah. Always have. I, I, I believe that to be true. I'm a big tomboy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not girly girly. Um, I've always loved cars. Indy cars were my first love. NASCAR was my second love. And then when I met Darren, I fell in love with drag racing. So. You had Indy cars. Who, who do you remember from your youth as an Indy car racer that you loved to watch? Davy Allison. Wow. And uh, Ken. Uh, oh gosh, no. Schrader. Schrader. Yeah. yeah. Ken Very, Schrader. They stood out in your mind. Those are the guys you, you watched. And yep. So this guy, you know, how did you and uh, Darren meet? We are high school sweethearts. Where did you go to high school? Chandler High. Okay. The Chandler Wolves or whatever? Chandler Wolves. There you go. Yep. Yep. And uh, we met. We were in second hour together. And I would follow him to class and sit behind him. And Was this intentional? Yes. Oh. <laughs> did, he, did he ever look at you and say, what, what are you following me for? Yeah. A couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of times. Then finally, uh, my girlfriend told me that he would never notice me. And I said, oh, he will. And uh, <laughs> so, you had a plan. I had a plan. And he, he didn't stand a chance. Well, he still doesn't stand a chance. There you go. <laughs> I like your style. So, so I met him at uh, the first time that we really met and got together. Um, he picked me up at Snack Shack in his Datsun truck with glass packs on it. Wow! And took me cruising before first hour. Wow. And then he walked me to first hour. And he wore English leather and gave me my first kiss. I have to turn around and look at him. Yeah. There's too bad the camera's not on him. Now. But that's cool. That's 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 yeah. very romantic. So right there, yep. You knew it. Yep. So got involved with his passion for for drag racing. What was your first time going to drags? Uh the first time I went to the drags with him, um, I called my mom from outside the attendance office and asked her to excuse me from school. <laughs> Told her I was going to the drags. And she said, that's fine as long as he brings you home. <laughs> and we went to Beeline Dragway. And it was the first time I'd ever been there. And he had a Pontiac Le Mans 63 with, you know, Krager wheels and the tires stuck outside the fender wells. Totally different than what it is nowadays. But it was a, it was a cool car. And... Uh, that's when I fell in love with him and fell in love with drag racing. What, was it a big event or? No, it was a like a high school drag thing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We always went to the high school drags and it, it was fun. Had a great time. So you're going to the races with him. Uh, you eventually said, yeah, I want to try that. Or was it you or did he say you should try it? Oh no, he didn't offer it. <laughs> I just dialed the car. That was my job, right. to dial the, the car, window. keep it clean, keep all the food going. And uh, one day I told him that I wanted to drive. And he, he said, if you can get your license, you can drive. And I said, oh, okay, well, that sounds like a challenge. So we had the 81 Camaro, the Thunderstruck car. And I uh, 
did a burnout, accidentally put both bulbs on at the same time, wasn't sure what to do, what not to do, so I foot braked it, and when the light turned yellow or green at that time, whatever it was, I don't remember my light, I uh, made it to the other end, and my first pass was a 946, and... But didn't we tell you that usually the first pass is an easy pass, or...? <laughs> yeah, they did, but it was just way too much fun to keep it in, so I did. And I went down around the corner and I waited for him to come get me. And about that time, a couple of guys came by and they were like, yeah, way to go, 946. And I was, and I looked at them and I go, oh shit. I go, and I climbed back in the car and I just sat there waiting for him. <laughs> and he came down on the scooter and he goes, what are you doing? I go, I'm just driving the car. <laughs> and he's like, no. No, you went way too fast. I go, well, can I do it again? <laughs> He's like, okay, but this time you got to go easy. And I go, okay. No, the the original yeah. license steps are yeah. an, an easy pass, a couple exactly. of half-track passes, then some yeah. full so. passes. And you just said, why do I want to wait for that stuff? This feels yeah. too good. And I still feel that way. <laughs> yeah. So to knock it down. So yeah. that was your, your first experience? And I... And I got my license, and I drove the Camaro, and and uh, he then had a '91 Trans Am that he drove, that was a newer car, and we both raced Super Gas, and then he told me that he wanted me to go to Super Comp, and I was like, why? And he said, because I don't want you to be in Super Gas with me, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> so he didn't want you to beat him. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so he bought me a, a Spitzer Dragster. And uh, I told him this one wasn't going to last long. And uh, then he came home and um, told me that he had purchased me a Tom Yancer race car. Big jumping yeah. cars, yeah. Yeah. It, it was uh, a hard tail car. Mm -hmm. So I drove it for many years that that car and then uh, he came home um, we sold that car actually to a sand drag lady and he came home and on Valentine's Day and gave me a receipt with a little business card holder with a dragster on it and he had bought me a newer 2007 Tom Yancer dragster for Valentine's Day so what was the difference when you got a real suspension in the car could you tell a big difference oh yeah oh yeah the thing about the hardtail is you can feel the track right. and you know what it's doing. Right. Suspension, you can you can feel it, but the ride's a lot smoother. Okay. So it definitely was a difference, but I still drive that car today and I love it. And so. you've done you've done okay with that car. I've done decent with it. Yes. Tell us about your 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 achievements in that car. Um. My first achievement was against uh, Gary Stennett in the final at the World Finals in 99, I think it was. And I runnered up to him. The weather was awful, the fog was awful, but he knew what to do and I was kind of a new driver and I'd made it to the finals and I raced him and he won. This and I was runner up. Yeah, in okay. Pomona. And I've won some super races here and there, and I've you know been a few rounds. Uh, first time I ever raced at Indy, pulled it off the trailer. First pass was an 890 with a three. Wow. I went four rounds. It was awesome. That was the ultimate experience. And that was the summer that Darren and I went back east and raced uh, Brainerd and Bowling Green and Indy, and it was just phenomenal. And the Indy, like Danny says, there's nothing like Indy. Right. But, you know, I love a lot of other racetracks too, you know, and love racing there. Indy's such a, uh, it's a long week, especially on the sportsman side. Yeah. The, uh, I, one thing I remember is uh, when you start going around, it's amazing, like after like the third round, second round, third round, you come back to the pits and all of a sudden you can see your trailer because other people have already pulled out. 
Yes. <laughs> and it makes you feel good yes. that you're still there, but it's kind of a weird feeling. Well, and also, I mean, my class, Supercomp, they were racing us at 7.30 in the morning. Right. And the sun wasn't even up. You and know. the track could be iffy in the morning, yeah. and, right? That's, but it was, it was awesome. That's a good, that's a nice awesome. achievement. Yeah. Would you, would you go back? Have you been oh, back? Oh, yeah. No, we haven't been back. Okay. But will I go back? Oh, yes. And Danny's going to go with us. <laughs> Good. He's your crew guy. He's our crew guy. Whether he likes it or not. Yes. Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah, that that's very. Uh, yes. I, I know. See, I told you, Danny. Somebody would, you know, would jump, jump in and take advantage mm -hmm. of you. The uh, <laughs> so tell me about your family. Um, I have a son who's just turned forty-two, and he races Super Comp. His daughter, who's my granddaughter, um, she races juniors. His um, son plays baseball. He's our ticket to the dugout. There you go. And uh, I have a daughter. Uh, she used to race uh, Super Gas. And she also did brackets in Super Street. And her son races uh, micro midgets, or micros. Sorry, not midgets, micros. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have a wonderful family. And that's the core of our racing. That's the core of our life. And we just do everything as possible together. You, you um, your, your, your family is uh, very, very accomplished. You know, you should be very proud of your, mm -hmm. of your family. The, uh, I've seen where the grandson that races the micros, uh, that was really interesting. I, you know, yeah, hey, that, yeah. That looks like dirt behind that kid, yeah. you know? But, you know, Facebook's a great place to, f to keep up with adults. Mm -hmm. It definitely is. Uh, the, who, who along the way, be besides Darren, I know, you know he's, he's been your biggest fan, but who else along the way that you, you would, would you say thanks to or that you would kind of help you and or was this somebody else you could talk to when you needed a, another ear? Um, probably my kids. Good. More than anything. Uh -huh. Yeah. We're very, I consider us to be very tight knit and it's nice to have that relationship at the age that we're at and at the age they're at. You know, we're very fortunate to still have that bond. But my kids are probably my sounding board without, you know, besides Darren. That's awesome. Yeah. The uh, any goals that you haven't? I need a, I need another man in my life, and he's gold. And just stand, stand and his name is Wally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. His name is Wally. <laughs> well, I, I I think we all, we all wish we could achieve the same, yeah. but definitely if anybody's going to do it, we know probably you before me or any of us. So. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Very, I've been trying really hard. But. So, how do you pay for all this? What do you do in real life? I do real estate and loans and a few extra little side jobs here and there. Darren works very hard at um, our business, Auto Image, and we've both been self-employed for a long time. We just work hard and I manage, you know, the budget and... The, the reason why I bring it up is that, you know, I know you do the real estate and I just mm -hmm. wanted to put a plug in for you because oh, thank you. Uh, I think any any car guys or car people out there that are looking for the right garage house with the right garage mm -hmm. or ability the place to put a garage on for their ultimate race shop uh, you know you know you you'd be very able to help these people find the right location and I've seen you put some listings up in the past that you know I live on the opposite end of town but they look like very nice things and very good opportunities for people and that's one of the hardest things to do is like you know the do I buy a house and build a shop, or get a house with a shop already, and and the, or how do I do it? And I, you know, I know that you're very capable of walking people through that process and what would work the best for them. So I highly recommend anybody out there that's looking for to do something like that to get a hold of you. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, anything that you want to share with us that is near and dear to you that you want to tell people about, or? You know, I know your family is, you know, you've done a lot. I mean, your yeah. family is obviously amazing, you know, when you, you know, what the accomplishments you. they've had and such, but uh, you, you're an awesome person. Thank you. Uh, I just 
can't think of anybody you know, when you went to the hot drag racing hall of fame you know you had to take what's his name along with you but <laughs> you know congratulations on that what did that mean to you i i was i was very shocked that i was the gratitude of the thought of even being considered for it was beyond words. Well, it's, mm -hmm. it's a nice recognition that's well deserved yeah. and, and certainly that you represent the Arizona drag racing community at, at its highest level. And yeah. We appreciate uh, everything that you've done for it. We appreciate you being here today. Uh, you are truly a Arizona drag racing legend and a much deserving member of the Arizona Drag Racing Hall of Fame. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. I'd like to thank um, our friends that come out and support us and our other family that comes out and supports us. It, it means a lot. And we have some really good times. So awesome. I'd like to thank all of them too. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.